See, that's why it's good to do this double box. I call it double box. I don't know what else to call it. I mean, just the method that I've been doing. Because if you just sit there and count, first of all, if you try to count this row or this column to find that five, you won't find it that way. You just won't. Because you don't have anything to compare it with, I guess. But if you, if you eliminate the boxes in each box, that's how you do it. That's like the big trick right there. If you can, if you want to re rewind the, the video and go back and see how I did that again, I would highly suggest it if you don't understand. Because that's a big deal. That I do that all the time. And I've done like thousands of these. In this column, the two can't be here or here or here. The two can't be here or here. And the two can't be there. So I found the two. Okay, so now we come across with the two and the two. And since there's a two here, across, across, the two has to be here. Because there's a two here and a two here, right there, and then up. So the two has to be here, which means that the five gets bumped up. And the five gets bumped up because if the five can only be in these two boxes, and the two is in one of them, definitely, and the five gets moved because that's where the five is and that's where the two is. Okay, so now we have two and a five. Good. Now the two comes down, and remember we found this two across, so it has to be there. And then I just scribble it out because we've already used it, and I don't want to get confused again. And maybe. Okay, the eight's not in these, it's not in these. The 8 can't be here, obviously, because it's right there. And luckily, we had this 8 right there because that helped narrow it down. Boom. So the 8 comes across, 8 comes across, and down it can only be in this box right there. That means I scribble out that 2 and put it there. Has to be there. Has to be. The 2 has to be there because out of these 2, if it's not there, that one. Okay. So now we took care of these 2 because this can't be the two. It's right there in that line. So there's a two. Scribble those out. And now what about the six? Now we can move the six down because if the six is only one of these. So the six comes down and then so does the seven. Uh, you can scribble those out if you want. I don't really bother anybody. Okay. Now we have one box that we have to kind of know the answer to. Why? Because we already know that these two are only a one and a nine. It's going to be a four. Two, three, the four has to be there. Okay. Four has to be there because the one and the nine, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then the nine, of course. So now we've got four numbers really quickly out of this whole box. So the two is there, six and the six, okay. When the six comes up like this and this from here and here, the six comes across like that, so. And when I draw this, when I draw the numbers, like the little notes, I kind of put them close to each other, like instead of just drawing, okay, the six is up here and uh, also the six is in this box. I just keep them close to each other so that I know I kind of have. Now that we have these two, definitely, it doesn't matter which one the seven or which one the eight is, you know that they're here, period. So if you have a whole line where even though you don't know which one it is, but they're definitely there, you can count and you know that the six is here. So one two, three, four, five. This has to be the six because it can't be here even though also it can't be there because of that. Okay, six. You never have to guess. In these puzzles, you never, ever, ever have to guess. Um, there's always a way to find it out. Although if you want to or if you want to just like cheat, you know, answers are in the back. But what's the point of just sitting there and filling in a piece of paper with all the numbers in the back? I mean. The point of this puzzle to me is just the strategy on how you find the numbers, and I think that's what's interesting to me.
Okay, good. Here's an example. This is another way to find a number. I just counted this line. <sighs> Let me see how I can explain it. There's also, okay. <laughs> if these two boxes have to be the four and the nine, that means that this one is the three. Also, you can find it out if you want to triple check. You can count it and whatever's missing. So one, it has a one, it has a two, it needs a three. It has a four, a five, a six, a seven, an eight, and a nine. Okay, so if you only need one number, that's what it is, right? But also, the way I knew to, to check for that, if you just try to do that on any random box, like say this one, you'll, you may be sitting there for a long time just saying, okay, this has a one, no, this needs a one, this has a two and a three, has a four, uh, needs a five, six, you know, so that's how I knew this one would be the three, because these two boxes have to be four and nine. The four can't be there, and the nine can't be there either, because it has to be like that. I don't like to have to remember too many things, but I can remember that. Okay, now, since I'm kind of like not on a roll anymore, I kind of stopped, I'm going to check each um, square for one number. So the one comes across and goes like that. The one can either be in one of these two, and I make a dash because I don't want to put a line right through the line. You won't be able to see it. So I put a dash kind of on a slant. Um, a one, a one, and that means that just like here, the one will also be here. So sometimes I just put one number one over here, or I just put two ones like right there. Okay, here's one. The one comes across here, and the one down here. So these two ones are right next to each other. And that's the only reason I write it, because they'll be next to each other in this case. So there's two, one. I may be repeating, I'm sorry if I am, but whatever, I'm just saying whatever I think. One comes across, one comes across, and then there's a one down here, so that means there's a one right there. See, even though there was no one over here, I said this before, but even there's no one over here, you know it's in of this row, you know it's here. You, it has to be, it has to be here, which means it can't be in the rest of it. It can't be. You can't have two ones in this line. That may be a good way to explain it. You can't have two ones in this line. So if, if it has to be one of these, you cut it across, cut it across, and there just happened to be a one there, which was lucky. Otherwise, I would have, you know, drawn a line like that, and we'd have to figure it out again. But that wasn't the case. So you cut up one, the one comes down, and that means like that, so it kind of matches. So we finish the two, I make a little dot, just like that, and that's how I know not to count the twos again, because I always start counting from this box, I'm always like, this is the first one, so I know if this has a little dot, I just don't count the two. If I forget that I've already got all the twos, then I don't need to remember. Three here, three here, so that means that the three and the one have to be here. I'll write it in. Sorry. The three and the one have to be here. So what about the six? My God, I sound like a boring teacher. <laughs> the six has to move up there. It has to. So I scribble it out. And the six has to go there. Why? Because the one and the three are here. The six comes across and up anyways. So the six has to be there. Which means that the one that corresponded to it cuts across, cuts across. And that's the good thing about having notes is that you don't have to remember and do that again. You don't have to be like, oh, okay, that goes up like, you just, it's there because you have the notes. Six, six, and then to correspond with this one, see, I didn't have to try to figure it out. I already knew that it's down there. So the six comes down and it's one of these. Then it can't be, I think we're done with the sixes. Six, here, 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 and here, here, here. 